Ignoring her pangs of hunger, Tess perched on the seat. An electronic chart slowly unfurled across the main screen as the trash barge made its way down the Great Canal. The convoy's route was going to take it across a daisy chain of vast lakes. Tess vaguely remembered from her history lessons that these had once been picturesque rural towns and valleys, all flooded to create the reservoirs that let Foundation City drink and wash. In the far distance was the bridge of mountains that she had last seen from the speeding bullet train. Beyond those mountains lay her only hope. She needed to find a small community where she could start again. It wouldn't be easy. A stranger arriving from the city was, would arouse suspicion. Her best bet would be to lie low for a while until the news moved on. Tess gazed up at the mountain ridge. There must be caves up there, somewhere she could shelter, make a fire, hunt small animals, live off the land for a few weeks. It was a, the best her exhausted mind could come up with. At least she now had a plan. She checked the charts to find the closest point between the Great Canal and the mountain. There was still time to close her eyes and grab some sleep. But unlike Tess, the computer-driven trash barge never closed its eyes, never rested. As she climbed out of the hold, the onboard sensors had detected a tiny change in weight distribution and inanimate loads shouldn't move. A systems alert was activated and the trash barge's CCTV powered up to take a look. Someone, somewhere, watched as a teenage girl made herself comfortable in the cabin. An unauthorised presence on the bridge breached shipping regulations. It would have to be investigated and dealt with. Traces. There were always traces. Chapter 79. The elevator reached the bottom floor, but didn't stop. It kept going down to levels unmarked on the indicator panel. Not many people are allowed this far, Gabrielle said, calmly. Killian didn't feel reassured. One of the things I love about science is humility, she said. I have no illusions about myself. I'm just a link in the chain. We all are, and anyone who thinks differently is deluded. The elevator finally eased to a standstill, but the doors stayed shut. The control panel demanded fingerprint verification. Gabrielle touched her thumb on the screen, and only then did the doors open, flooding the elevator with light. They emerged into an expansive, hallowed space, silent and calm. In the very centre of the glossy marble floor were two highly polished titanium statues life-sized depictions of a strange creature. One posed standing up, the other crouched on all fours like a hunter. Killian gazed at the statues, struggling to make sense of what he was seeing. It was confusing. The creature was a disturbing amalgam of the familiar and the strange. Then, suddenly, it pulled into focus. My God, he whispered. Not quite, but I think he would have approved. Gabrielle walked towards the statues. This is the real goal of our research, Killian said. She reached out and gently touched the gleaming metal surface. Human perfection. The creature had a muscular torso rippled with an exoskeleton. Four limbs that were a strange fusion of arms and legs. A face that was human, but with individual elements rearranged and supplemented. Meet H+, plus, Gabrielle said. She's the future. The epitome of intellect and athleticism. As comfortable on two legs as four, pre-adapted to survive in the environmental changes that are now unstoppable and the social chaos that will follow. She paced around the statues, proudly pointing out various innovations, gills that work alongside lungs. For a world that's flooded, skin that photosynthesizes light into energy to survive famine, 
eyes that work across a broad range of frequencies to see toxic radiation, limbs that can regenerate an immune system resistant to nearly all known changes. This is the ultimate human being. And you and me and all those children in Gilgamesh, we're just stepping stones on the journey to this. For a few moments, Killian was dazzled by the beauty of the creature, built with such searing logic. It's incredible, he whispered. She is, Gabrielle said with quiet pride. I knew you'd understand. But Gabrielle turned her piercing gaze on Killian. What about everybody else? What about them? Gabrielle seemed puzzled. If this is human plus, where does that leave humans? Ordinary humans who are alive today. I'm not interested in ordinary. There's a world full of people who need genetic cures and vaccines. Am I my brother's keeper? Gabrielle said sharply. You can't just write off 10 billion people. People who did nothing as the climate changed, despite all the warnings. People who ignore warnings reap the whirlwind. So this is some kind of revenge. No, it's just the inevitable. Evolution is brilliant but cruel. It punishes weakness and stupidity. What kind of justice is that? Justice has got nothing to do with it. If natural selection was fair, life on Earth would have been snuffed out as soon as it began. That's just a simple fact. But now humans can define what we are. She rested her hand on H+. And this is it. No, it isn't. Killian stared at the gleaming, arrogant statues. This isn't what it means to be human at all. This isn't just about, this is just about survival. Everything, everything that makes life worth living. Oh, you mean love and art and all those fuzzy ways of thinking? Gabrielle smiled. <laughs> we tried so hard to design sentimentality out of you, Killian. Love is just an illusion to trick, to remix the genes with every generation and music and literature and culture, they service the remix. They're the veneer that masks what's really going on. Killian finally saw just how pitiless she was. I want nothing to do with this or you. I understand. It's strong stuff, isn't it? That's why we need to make some adjustments. Killian felt suddenly uneasy as Gabrielle walked towards him. You haven't turned out quite like we'd hoped. I don't want adjusting. He backed away. I just want to leave here now. Okay, that's fine. If that's what you want, you can go. Why was she being so understanding? Let's at least part on good terms. Gabrielle opened her arms as if to give him a final hug, but Killian shook his head. After what you've done? He turned and strode towards the elevator doors. Moments later, he heard her footsteps behind him. Killian spun round defensively, but Gabrielle just smiled. You'll need me to unlock the doors. Innocently, she lifted her right hand to show her thumb. And in that moment of distraction, she struck. Her left hand lashed out, gripping Killian's neck. He felt a sharp pinprick in his flesh. I'm so sorry. Immediately, weakness started to flood into him. He tried to pull away, but she held his neck tightly. I'm not going to hurt you, she spoke softly. I just want to put you back into development. No. You won't remember any of this, not even as a bad dream. And you'll wake up so much better. Fight before it's too late. He tried to gather his energy, to slip out of time, but the toxins flooding his body were confusing his reactions. He was not going to end up in Gilgamesh. They were not going to wipe him clean like some malfunctioning machine. No! 
Exploding with rage, he smashed Gabrielle's arm aside. As he stumbled backwards, he saw discharge Mistress Eugene in her hand. What's in it? Killian swayed uneasily. Tell me. He lunged towards her, trying to grab the syringe, but Gabrielle dodged backwards and ran towards the elevator. Without thinking, Killian leapt, but now he was off balance, his senses confused. He smashed her heavily, slamming her to the floor. She gasped with pain, with shock. Fighting to coordinate his movements, Killian dragged himself to his knees and rolled Gabrielle over. Blood was oozing across her shirt. The syringe had punctured her heart. She gasped, but it was barely audible. Already the colour was draining from her face. Her lips were tinged with grey. You should have let me go, Killian said. Why didn't you let me go? Gabrielle mustered all her energy, fighting the drugs that were shutting her systems down. You can never be out. She coughed tried to speak again, but it was incoherent, a last groan. Then she fell silent. Killian stared at her, but she didn't move again. Her body didn't even twitch. He dropped to his knees, slumped over her, trying to wrestle back control. She was a predator, trying to kill him. He defended himself. There was no choice. One of them had to die. Killian touched his neck. The weakness had stopped spreading. His body was containing the chemical. Escape. He had to escape or it would all have been in vain. His eyes darted across the walls, hunting for CCTV. But there was nothing. Perhaps the secret inside this room was so sacrosanct that it had to remain invisible. His mind flashed back, piecing together the fragments of the building he'd seen over the last two days constructing a map. I see it. Struggling to contain his remorse, Killian bent down, grabbed Gabrielle and dragged her body across the room, leaving a bloody wet smear on the smooth marble. At the elevator, he yanked her hands up and touched her thumbs on the control panel. Identity confirmed. The doors opened. He dropped Gabrielle's body, but as she fell, Killian heard her smart cells clatter to the floor. He picked it up. A whole string of message updates from P8 security scrolled across the screen. They had a trace on Tess. She was trying to escape along the Great Canal and they were closing in fast. Chapter 80. Tess couldn't help smiling. No matter how smart the world got, water still flowed downhill. Right now, that gave her the perfect chance to get away. Several kilometres back, the convoy had started to break up, as individual trash barges peeled off for different destinations. Her barge was heading for one of the highland boil downs, which meant that it had to navigate a series of 40 canal locks that climbed up into the mountain foothills. Fully automated and computer controlled, these locks bore only a passing resemblance to the hand-cranked wood and iron gates from centuries ago. Now, huge synthetic shutters rose and fell on hydraulic rails in a continuous, noisy techno dance. It was ugly and soulless, but it didn't matter, as no one was out here to see. One feature had survived brutal modernization. The towpaths. And as the barge rose through the first lock, Tess leapt, leapt onto the dry land and ran. She picked a line straight across the heathland and headed for the sawtoothed mountain ridge. Even though the low shrubs had caught the most recent snowfall, stopping the ground underneath from freezing hard, it was still tough going. Every intake of cold air stabbed her lungs, and her muscles craved energy, reminding her how little she'd eaten in the last 24 hours. It was only willpower that kept Tess going. After half an hour of pain, her body settled into a rhythm, her breathing steadied, and her legs found a fluid momentum. 
now running on autopilot. She could finally think. To the west was a massive bank of black clouds was edging closer. Snow. She needed to find shelter before that came or she'd be in deep trouble. Yet, for all the menace in the clouds, Tess felt a strange sense of peace. As she ran on, she knew that she had never been so vulnerable. If she twisted her ankle or didn't find food, she would die out here. And yet the dangers were no match for the exhilarating sense of freedom. All her life with revelation, she had lived in fear. Fear of the unknown, fear of change, of the future. And everything she'd done had been an attempt to escape from that fear. But now, faced with the total indifference of this raw landscape, Tess realised that she could never escape it. Fear was all around her, waiting for her at every turn. But if she looked hard enough into its dark heart, she could still find freedom. An hour later, she came to a frozen stream. She stamped her feet on the glistening ice until it cracked. Then, hacked out a hole and scooped handfuls of water into her dry mouth. It was so cold and clean, it seemed to rush into every last cell of her body. She stood up and looked at the mountain range, stretching into the distance. This was where she belonged. It felt so right, until four dots moving on the horizon jolted her heart. Please, no. She stared at the dots, willing them to be nothing more than wild animals, but they were too organised and too relentless. They were men, moving steadily towards her, never breaking formation, closing with deadly intent. They could only be assassins. P8 or Revelation, it made no difference now. Tess screamed with frustration. She dropped off the networks. She'd left no trace. How the hell had they found her? She glanced up at the approaching dots. Why wouldn't they just let her vanish? She was no threat to them out here. She would never be a threat to them again. But killers don't listen to reason. She would just have to keep running. Tess turned, leapt across the frozen stream and bolted. She would not let them catch her. She would not.